Dan here, Davey's Beach Shop. Today, working on a 56 Chevy wagon, but we're kind of cleaning up the garage. Did you guys ever have it where you buy a car in the winter time and the guy tells you, oh yeah, don't worry buddy, you can keep it here until spring. And oh, thanks man, that made my life so much easier. Then you forget you bought that car and then the guy calls you and says, hey, when are you gonna get that car? And you go, oh yeah, I forgot about that car. Ah. And you just bought another car and you're just really, yeah. Anyways, the addiction continues. So today, working on this thing, I noticed it's got a uh, transmission leak, which, as I recall, I had one before and it was low on transmission when I wanted to move it. So those all kind of coincide together, but uh, such is life. Now I think what we're gonna do today, I did unload it. It was full of just spare parts and junk and whatnot. So we're kinda cleaning all the miscellaneous stuff out. I did steal the seat, well, part of the seat for the Nomad. So we might be you know, borrowing seats back and forth, whatever we gotta do. But uh, such is life. I don't have any sill plates. I don't think I got a few or two maybe. Got all the junk out. We gotta get the Holly mounted up properly. And honestly, I think I just got to kind of go through this thing and see what all it needs. There is a heater in it. Uh, the transmission is all hooked up. I think neutral safety and all that's all dialed together. Based on what I did here, I don't remember what I did, but usually I put that in. That'll run all the extra stuff. So it looks like we got fans. This one says Fogger Burger. Wish I could read my own writing. We'll have to track where that goes. I don't know what else I have here. Only one fan on it. I do have some lights. Anyway, we'll figure all that stuff out. But for today, or this video, we'll start knocking things out just kind of one at a time and see where we end up. I want to move the battery tray. I have another one. I don't know if this is the one I'll use or not, but 55, 56 Chevys, the battery's up on the firewall, which is fine. Everything's gonna gets tight there. 57s were right here, so you can mount it. There's lots of room. There's no screwing around. I'll probably mount it sideways, wherever I got to do. We can move the horn just on the other side. We're fine. Uh, we got to figure out some sort of an air intake. The throttle is very stiff. So I don't know if that's the cable or the pedal. We have to uh, address that situation. Um, what else do we have going on here? Battery cables and all that sort of stuff. Oh, there's no charge system whatsoever on this which has been an issue since day one of putting this in. These LS motors are really like 12 volts. So this thing that you could charge it would run good, but then it acts funny and does all sorts of goofy things and all that. So I would like to eliminate all that. Looks like you got a bunch of good grounds on this thing though. Someone did a good job at one point. This poor car, I got to force myself to finish it. It needs a little bit of light body work. Somebody has shmangled it. But honestly, now that I'm looking at it, I feel like it's almost like Danny's car. It's gonna need like a couple of weeks worth of work. I gotta order some stuff. Needs wipers, wiper motor, a little bit of interior, polish it up, shine it up, make sure the lights work, and kind of that's it. The problem is I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing. I already have a station wagon with overdrive and it's a little bit cooler. So we'll see, but uh, I'm gonna get cleaned up just a little bit, move some of this stuff out of the way. I think we'll start tackling the battery, move that, you might have to go buy cables and all that sort of stuff, but we'll figure it all out. Same radiator we have in the Nomad, so it should run nice and cool. I only have one fan on it, but eh, we'll figure it out. Let's so check that out. I just weld this thing in real nice like, but she's sturdy. Um, I mean, it's a little tight to the, uh, what's it called? The tensioner, but at the end of the day, uh, it'll go in to loosen it and it should, I can't imagine the belt's gonna stretch an inch. So it'll be fine, and if it's not, we'll deal with it then. People always worry, I guess, that it's, you know, battery kind of sticks up high past everything, but, you know, Tri-5s have this hood that they really curve up. So she's fine. Ah. Um, we are gonna do a little bit of messing around here with the wiring. This is kind of ugliness for sure. Um, I don't know what, there's three wires here. I think two go to the terminator and one is powering that fuse block over there. And as for grounds, uh, they both go in. So these probably both go to the terminator actually. So not too big of a deal. I can just extend them, run to the battery. And I'm hoping 
the battery cable that I have, this looks like a decent one, it's like two gauge or something. I can get snakes up behind the motor. If I can maybe loosen it and snake it up around the front. Unfortunately, the battery I have has the positive over here. I mean, we can flip it or do whatever, but uh, we'll just see. I'll make a tie down for it. Well, that's all this kind of little piddly stuff. So that went pretty good. We should be okay. Everything is away from the headers and all that, which is nice. I'm going to screw around next. Well, we'll see what we got here. I'm going to see if I can get this. Damn it. Get that cable routed a little nicer around the headers. I have to get under it to do it, which is ugly. And we got a favorite charge system. I think what I'll probably do for the charging system is I'll just run a cable from the back of the alternator, you know, loop it around the core support and right to the battery. So it'll just charge there. Versus when you go to the starter or whatever else, I guess at LS would it do, but that'll be fine. And then I do have to, oh, I have the plug, which that's nice. So this plug, I'll have to look at my car, but one of these you just need to put 12 volts to, but it's very important you run like a light bulb or something in between it or a resistor or else it will cook your alternator. Feel free to ask me in the comments how I know that. And not only will it cook your alternator, it'll have your alternator charge at like 20 some volt and it'll cook the charge wire all the way across right the way through and cause all sorts of pandemonium. So don't do that. So I'll get a little mess around here. We'll kind of come back. I know I'm just kind of talking away, but uh, unfortunately that's the way it's going to go on this. All the hard work's been done. This is, uh, man, whoever did this did a pretty nice job though, eh? Danny's come out after a hard evening of playing video games. Hey, I'm streaming. So what I did here, I did a bunch of just screwing around and it's a little ugly, but it's actually very well done. Just needs to be kind of cleaned up a little. So come on, come on in here. Where's that? I need the light. I'm too fat to reach it. But I've redone still a couple of little holiday weights still from Christmas. Um, so I've redone all the wiring here. So it's all heat shrunk and nice. I have everything just separate just so we know what's going to go on. Uh, the wire ran right to the starter was good. There was no issues there. I put a brand new ground on right to the cylinder head. So that's good. Everything is loose. So just bear with me on that. I ran a huge horking cable um, across to the alternator. So that's all dialed. So everything is just hooked up how it was. Um, but now it just needs to be kind of zip tied or P clamped, insulated clamped away. On this side, now this is the real crucial part. So this wire here, now this is where things get a little goofy, I will admit. At one point this had a small block Chevy in it or a big block Chevy in it, or it actually had both in it. And the alternator was over there where the battery is. So in this big loom, we go around and you can see where this wire goes in right there to that white wire. That's the exciter wire. So I had extended it all the way over there, which obviously an LS is on this side. So I'll have to break into this looming here, peel it out, run around and go into there. Anyway, so this is just, this is kind of temporary, but it works. So that has 12 volts to it which is great, but this alternator does not want 12 volts. You have to blow through this little resistor. So this is some hokey poke stuff right here. No bones about it. A couple of butt connectors into your resistor. Now, but that is very important because as I said before, that's where, well, that's where we were together. We were checking the PO box at one time. Remember the whole car overcharged and burnt that wire down. It was a big issue. That's why. Now you know as well as the people. These are what they are. They're 470 ohm half watt resistor they're like 10 of them was four dollars or some ridiculously small amount of money amazon has them you can do that i've seen guys well newburn told me guys ran like a rev limiter chip through it and actually when we did brandon's car he got a guy had a wire maybe they sell it at the parts store at this point now it was a connector with a wire that was all i don't know it was all ready to go just plug it in and go so that was mint. Now I'll grab this camera. That was a pretty sweet trade-off. Now, it's like, it's like the batons. So this thing should kick this on. It should work. It should start and it should charge. So 12 volts, contact.
as I said, it should start. Oh, the fan kicked on. Or what? What turned the fan on? Huh? No data. Oh, we probably got. I'm probably said with that loose ground. These terminators and all that stuff really don't like loose grounds. So maybe I should tighten that up. Maybe it'll just work. If it doesn't work this time, we'll tighten it up. Uh, hacking with Dan at midnight. Come on. Okay. Okay. We're gonna go up there and tighten up that ground. Take two. These Hollies really enjoy grounds and good clean power. And yet I keep trying to cheat the system even though everybody and Holly tells me not to. So here we go. Look at that. So it's hunting around a little bit, but it's charging 14 volts, 30 pounds oil pressure, 1000 RPM. Life's good. That's where we're going to for a night. Now, Here's my deal. I always leave the ground loose because I like to take it off just in case there's ever any issues. Again, tonight I'm going to pull it off. You know, I just don't trust this thing enough yet. Even though it has brand new wiring, brand new everything, everything is fused. I just worry about it. You don't want to shop fire. So we'll pull the ground off. Really what this thing needs, I've got all the wiring dialed. It needs to be driven, get up the temperature, learn, probably reprogrammed. Who knows, but even knows what the heck motor and all that's in this thing because you have to program that in and then I don't know how long it remembers for or what it does, but this thing is sat unplugged for quite some time, but it'll figure itself out and do its thing. But uh, list of stuff we'll get going on tomorrow. That was pretty big. Uh, all this stuff's kind of getting together. I got to get some insulated clamps and, you know, the wiring properly, but tomorrow will be a big one. Well, it's the next day. Granted, I haven't done much. We have the car running. I just cleaned up the wire a little bit, zip tied them, taped them, uh, did the alternator properly, a few little things like that. Uh, I went through it. I was trying to figure out why the fan wasn't working. Well, it turns out I wired it up so that the Holly was actually control the fan. What a concept, eh? Using it how it's supposed to be used. So I just brought up the temperature so it would learn. It has to get to 160 to learn. Yeah, a little stumble here and there. Well, that has all since been fixed. I had it so the fan would come on at 190 or 195, sorry. So I should bring it down to 190. See, the fan is on. 24 ish pounds of oil pressure, but now it's much snappier. Everything seems to be okay. The only thing I have noticed that I have to deal with the shifter uh, is not quite adjusted properly, so reverse is good. So we go into reverse, neutral. And then drive. Oh, did it go in? No. You have to go into third for it to go into drive, but if you push it into drive, it still stays in there. So it just isn't quite pulling far enough. Look at that, 189 even now. So um, we got up to temperature, it runs good, I'm happy with it. Didn't start knocking or anything like that. I don't think I've done much for this thing since it's all been together. We do got to fix that leak. So on the way home from work, I picked a bunch of undercoating, some seal all, oh, it's a little rich in here. And uh, we'll go from there. So it's gonna rain for sure. But now this thing has got temperature. I'm happy with it. I'm gonna let it all cool off. You can kind of zip tile the wires out of the way and make it look pretty. I wanna get under it. I'm gonna fix that transmission leak. Maybe put a little bit more adjustment in that cable. Probably seems a little bit taken out for the shift cable. Then undercoat everything, paint everything. I think I might just go ahead and put the bushings properly in this, the rear suspension while it's up. Just use those old wagon springs I put in. They're kind of junk, but you know what? For what this is, it'll be fine. And then I think that's where I might leave it for today in this video. Maybe take it for a bit of a ride. We'll see what happens. I do got to get on and do the body work with this, which I'm going to use the Bobcat and just do all those things. But yeah, then I got to just make a list of what this thing needs, but didn't have headlights. I don't know if it has taillights, just kind of junk like that. But this car is so much further along than I remembered it was. 
which is a nice little uh, surprise. Murr actually just stopped by and he was like, yeah, you were gonna take this thing to power tour, it's basically ready to go, and then you change your mind. I'm like, oh yeah. Which I have to keep remembering those things. Anyway, let's cool off, we'll be back at it. Well, more of the same, so it's dark out. <clears throat> so I was running this thing, looking for the transmission oil leak, and we found it. So what this has, it's a 700 R4 transmission, which that's yeah, maybe not ideal, but it's what we have. And there's, it's essentially, it's a TV cable. It's kind of like a kick down cable, not it's uh, controls the pressure in the transmission. And so cable runs from the throttle body into the transmission. And there's just like a little O-ring. This one actually is a hat seal. So the kind of like a dipstick tube, but plunk plunks in there. And then the, uh, the cable housing fits in. There's just one, uh, bolt that holds it all together. It was leaking. So I took it out and I cleaned it up with brake clean and I smeared on a bunch of seal all, which is pretty good stuff. It's on my fingers. So it, it dries in like one or two minutes, um, which should be fine. And then it takes like two to four hours and I have to cure. So we're going to leave that till tomorrow. And I think hopefully we'll have some luck. Um, I pulled down the corner of the pan. So I drained the fluid out. Um, you know, below where this little kind of piece was. So it should be okay. It's, no, it's not like it's sitting in fluid, but this seal all is meant for gas and solvents and all sorts of stuff. So hopefully the little transmission oil is no big deal. Well, I was under the car. I was going to paint it and all, but it doesn't look that bad. I mean, it's, it definitely looks old and new and you can see that. That's kind of the whole point of this car. So I don't know. I was looking for springs. I haven't found anything obvious. Um, for the time being, I think what I'm going to do is I put this together, just kind of rigged it up so it would run. I got to put a bushing back in, put some proper hardware. We'll do that. We'll make that all work and just kind of give it a once over while we're under there. I gotta get lug nuts and all that kind of jazz for it, but it's enough that we can maybe take it for a ride. So I think tomorrow we'll make sure that transmission oil is good and then yeah, maybe we'll go for a little ride. Then after that, we'll do lights, we'll do some body panels. I gotta make a list of all the stuff I need to kind of get taken care of before it goes for inspection, but I. The list is just short and I'm, I must be missing something, but uh, yeah, we'll get after it. This thing is, uh, I should have just finished it. The DD Speed Shop way really screwed me on this one. It's a cool car. Another new day, but we just got this thing running. I was checking to see if it has any transmission leaks after I put some in. And uh, you can see or not, but right there, ish. I dropped a bunch of the seal all and it made a mess so that's obviously where it leaks down to. I wiped it off yesterday, it's been running for a while. Right full. Seems like it should be okay. I re-leveled the thing so it's level before it wasn't. I, I don't know what I did with the jack stands. But obviously it was pouring transmission oil and uh, 187 degrees. Man, that fan actually brings her down. It's pretty good. 24, 25 pounds of oil pressure. I think we're okay. So I think what I'm going to do, I did actually order an uh, oil pressure sender, sensor, sensor. Apparently they're always kind of no good on these things. So just change it and see what happens. So we'll do that. I don't know where I put it because that was a while ago. Actually, there were two. So I was going to put one in, I think my black car. Anyway, so that's fine. But I think what we're gonna do next. I was under it, I was like, eh, I don't really wanna paint it. It kind of looks fine. Oh, bird. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the rear wheels. We're gonna pull the front wheels. We're gonna clean up the rotors because they said rust on them, so it's gonna be a quick buff. The rear we're gonna pull off. I'm gonna pull out the one spring that's bent. I'm gonna try and straighten it on that there press because that seems like a smart idea and see what happens. And because I, man, I tried looking them up. They have gotten expensive. So we gotta wait till we find a deal or something like that. But uh, for now, it's fine. It'll be together, no, no big deal. It has to come apart anyways, put that bushing in. So we'll just do that. And then uh, call for a day. Next video, bodywork driving it. And then after that, I mean, it's like wipers, headlights and like plating it. So that's the plan. I hope this doesn't start leaking. That would be terrible. But I have confidence it'll be fine. Okay, so leak them out real easy, obviously. Um, unfortunately, I did kind of booger one of these together, 
the uh, oh. maybe I can clean those up. They're not too bad. Um, kind of screw the threads up. Fine thread, half inch. But here's the leaf, and she goes from smiley to a little unhappy. So I think we're gonna do put this in the press, support it here, here, and press right there, and ring and crank her up so she's smiley face. And uh, we'll see, I, I don't know if this was bent before, if it's unhappy or what, if the spring is bad, if maybe someone heated it, so it's been kind of lowered or whatever. If it does the same thing again, you know what we'll do? We'll just heat the other side up so it kind of hunkers down and it'll be lowered in the back. Gasser, gasser wagon. Or we just heat the front springs too. I mean, really, if you have one bad spring, you should just match the three and then it's problem solved. Do that real quick. Well, okay, I'll set the camera up. We might as well film this uh, debauchery. The other side, I got a drop down. Unfortunately, I just put one bushing in and then uh, put the hardware together and, and carry on. Now, I'll show you underneath real quick because I, like, I think it's fine. And honestly, I just need your guys' opinion to be like, oh yeah, you're fine, buddy. Don't worry about it. So here's my thoughts. <laughs> it's uh, basically meant to be. So if I press down there, it should kind of hopefully bend that up a little bit. Um, we always put some spacers or do some miscellaneous. We're gonna try that first. This is just like a little, I think it's a 10 ton uh, little press, which I got from Princess Auto many years ago, very cheap. And we, I used the crap out of this thing. MERS used it, MERS just used it actually last. Let's see. It's doing something. Uh, oh yeah. Oh. It's definitely smiley face now. We'll see what it goes back to. Gentle, gentle. Oh yeah, junk. So it's flat now. It needs a little bit more. It needs more smiley. But. Maybe we'll move it just a little bit ahead. We'll give her again. And then screw around and then probably put it back together. And then the second the weight is on it, it'll just go blah right back. Maybe not. Isn't this like they, they re-arc springs? That's a thing, right? This feels sketchy. She's smiley face now. I think. Better get far enough away. Oh yeah. Um. Hmm. You'll see what I can do back here. Just give it one little burp. Just so it's got a couple of bends in it. And then uh, I think we'll go ahead and reassemble. Man. If this works. I'd be shocked. Actually, where I caught this idea was my hillbilly buddy zip ties and body supplies. He did a, a lift video where he did this by re-arching a spring on his press. And I feel it's basically the same as desagifying one. Okay, we'll give her a little, a little extra. That way when it does sack itself out, it'll be stock. Oh yeah. There we go. Are you seeing that? What a fixed. Huh? Saved myself like 500 bucks. Or I wasted 15 minutes. But uh, let's jam this back in, pull the other side. I wonder if I should pull the other side out and match them. It's probably the way to go away, guys. Okay, so this one's a little saggy now too. So we're gonna go ahead and just do the same thing at the front. Um, these springs I had originally thought were going to go in the Nomad, well they weren't in the Nomad, so I had cut all the clamps off the back so it could fan out, and I clamped the hell out of the front so it would kind of act like some hillbilly traction bars, but uh, should be good on a nice cruiser wagon. Anyways, I'm going to get that bent real quick, go back and forth a few more times, and then uh, we got to put one more, I didn't put that bushing in because it didn't fit, so I'll press that bushing in, 
back together she goes and uh, I gotta put proper hardware on it, put like 9 16 long bolts and it just kind of holds it so nothing was proper it's all half inch stuff so I'll go put that in and then I'll show you underneath this hot rod because it looks good so pretty pretty close modified them up slap these back in bolt that sucker down and uh, be done with it well I gotta just show you the ceiling a little bit while I lie down anyway under here oh we got a bunch bunch of stuff done let's just go over it so up here stupid lights up there so this thing I had to modify a factory um, carbureted uh, fuel tank so up on the top that's where the EFI lines are so I cut in this tank welded in uh, a base for an electric I think I put a Fitec pump in and I used the factory sender for the fuel level now I just put a cap on it so that's fine I actually put a screw in there a few things I had missed um, we've got the shocks bolted in I did have this thing with the floor jack under it because you want to have a little bit of load at ride height when you tighten all your bushings front or back. I've said that a bunch of times, but look at that. We've got a nice curve, and even when I had, obviously, taking it down, but even when we had uh, the load on it, it still had a curve to it, which was nice. The backs were a little flat, but eh, it is what it is. Um, what else we got going on here? So that's, that's basically all together. Now, just to kind of show you everything under here, we have a brand new floor pan, factory frame, new exhaust. And then you know, get in the center. We have a new drive shaft. You know, all that sort of stuff. This rear end's a a ten bolt out of a Camaro Nova type thing. So it's a half inch narrower than stock, but it's got 373 posi and it's rebuilt. All brand new brakes and whatnot. You know, obviously new fuel tank. And I kind of like this look. And that's where I don't know. Do you paint it all black? Do you screw around? Or just kind of leave it as it is. And uh, I suffer with that on a regular basis. Oh, oh. And you know, people on the internet always tell me, I can't believe I sell these cars and I'm ripping people off and blah, 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 blah. For me, I always think I'm putting it all on the internet and this is very obvious what's new and what's not. Also, I don't care. But uh, what else we got going on? I think that was all I kind of took care of under there. Ugly, boring job, but it's back together. Oh, I put that bushing in. Everything is torqued, ready to go. But let me know in the comments, please leave it the way it is. So here's my thoughts. It's only original once. And when I say original, it's beat to hell. But this is original paint. The only panel I changed that we blended in was I put rockers on and the bottom of one, maybe two fenders, I forget. And then we put a windshield in it. Oh, and a different hood. But the hood's actually kind of cool because it's I mean, a 56 hood, but it's the same color as this. Obviously, this was never a two-tone option, but it kind of, it works. The patina, whatever you want to call it. I've done a lot of faux tina and all that sort of stuff. This is one of the rare ones I have where the patina kind of matches. And I kind of feel like you almost got to hold that underneath. You know, we put a new floor pan in. We're not trying to hide nothing. But the frame was good. The rear, the rear structure was great. The tire wall was great. You know, I mean, the rear end, I didn't paint it when I... It was all sandblasted when I got it. And I didn't paint it because I wanted it to kind of rust and do its thing and just look how it looks. You'll be able to see there's disc brakes at the front, the new drums in the back, yada, yada. I also hooked up the fuel sending unit because it wasn't hooked up. And I believe it works now because it did go, I think dead full. But now we do it, she's empty, slightly above empty. So, I'm pretty sure Chevs, when they're not hooked up, they go all the way to full. But I think this is a good place to leave it for now. I don't, that transmission hasn't started leaking yet, so I'm going to call that a win. We still got lots to do on this thing, but you know, this car has been a lot of fun for a lot of different reasons. And uh, I hope it's fun for you guys to watch. When I work on a car for a bit, then I put it away. I know I kind of let people down where you're not finishing it. But this car now, you work on it. You put it away and you go work on it again it's fun you're not trudging through trying to get it finished and we got a lot of projects going on so it actually works kind of nice to kind of work for a bit take a break work for a bit take a break 
and just it keeps things flowing. I find I work faster and better, and I and and it's uh, it's like you're like, what did the last guy do? I'm like, oh, I was the last guy, but he actually did decent work. And uh, just to round it out real quick, when we were going down a power tour, I had been thrashing on that 55 Nomad. And I mean, you guys all watched it. It was terrible. I was unhappy. I hated that car. I was mad at it. <laughs> Hitting it, scratching it, doing all these things just out of pure frustration. We hit the road, and as we're going down, you know, Danny's like, so we're leaving early. I'm like, yeah, to drive all these miles, yeah. In a 55 Nomad, yeah. And I was excited to go work on a 57 Chevy, which is the same. The whole car is the same. But it was different, and you're working with your buddies, and it was just like a fresh set of eyes, and a fresh set of tools, and a fresh environment. It felt fun. Now, I know I'm very fortunate I have two garages, but I can walk away from this one, because I'm mad at it, because a bolt won't come out, or I'm doing a suspension, or I'm doing the front brakes, and it's not fun. And I can go over there, and work on like another car, which is basically all the same, and do the exact same job, but for whatever reason, in my tiny head, I enjoy it. So, thank you guys very much for allowing that to happen. Make sure you leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, all those things. This thing should be up and running next video. I'd like to take it for a ride around the block. We gotta do some body work. I figure we put the dance in with a bobcat. We should take them out with a bobcat. But for now, it's supper time. And uh, onward and upward. Try five Chevy, story of my life. See you in the next one.